thanks for dropping in. This is 3D Printing, and I'm here with Grant from 3D Musketeers. How you doing, everybody? We're, uh, wait, this is not normal for me, but it, it's, it's normal for you. It feels right to me. It, it does kind of feel right. Yeah. It, it does kind of feel right. It's much easier for editing. It is much easier for editing, but we got to show the folks at home what you look like. All right. All Let's right. Let's go. Are you ready? You got it. All right. Here it is, guys. For the first time on our channel, 3D Printing. We are here with someone whose voice you'll recognize, his hands you might recognize, but his face you've seldom seen. This is my buddy Joe, how you all know him, 3D Printy. How you doing, dude? Doing great. Thanks for dropping in, Grant. Oh, I am so excited to be here. I love seeing your projects. Uh, Joe and I hang out basically every week and he always has something new to show whether it's a completely new look for the snowmen it's a fidget toy heck the coolest thing that you've done recently in my opinion is that braille project mm. the open source braille it is so freaking cool if you or someone you know does have issues with eyesight you can make this now and it's completely 3d printed mm -hmm. and you don't have to buy the ones that are online that are like 600 bucks yeah it's it's very cheap very easy to make Mm -hmm. and it's completely open source, so people can resell it or whatever. It's As long as it goes and helps as many people as possible, that's what's important to me. So, Joe, talk to me about how this all came to be. Yeah, so I've been designing a lot of uh, 3D printed fidgets. That's and super these, cool. Thank you. These are multi-filament color too, dude. Oh, yeah, this nice rainbow color. These are multi-material fidgets. They got TPU on the inside, uh -huh. PLA on the outside, so you can just print it all in one go and then pop the, uh, the buttons in. But I figured out that this uh, design yeah. would be perfect for a Braille cell. So I worked with Courtney and Reese of Filament Stories yep. to get a good uh, dimensions and sizing and, and good feel to optimize a good Braille fidget. It's so freaking cool, dude. Yeah. Like, and for those that don't know, Courtney Filament Stories, her daughter, Reese, is blind. Reese has an amazing story. Courtney has talked about it on her channel. We, we will link to Courtney's channel and, of course, 3D Printing's channel so you guys can see. I, I'm, I'm literally getting chills because it is it, one of the most inspiring things that I've seen recently in this industry. And it, you are literally the perfect person to be doing this kind of thing. Well, uh, 3D Printing has so many opportunities to help with assisted devices. 3D Printing, because it can be customized and perfect, perfected for a specific person, yeah. is just a, such a powerful tool that you'll never be able to do with mass manufacture. It is fun to make interesting stuff, you know, dragons and all that, but it is way more rewarding to make something that just helps others, right? I love that kind of stuff. Now, this is my favorite. What's your favorite? Ooh, I'm big on puzzle boxes. Big on puzzle boxes. Puzzle right. boxes are what brought me into 3D printing to start out with. And my very first design, uh, might give Joel Telling PTSD because I sent him one of these and it was, oop, there we go. This guy is posable and he's maybe a little too posable. <laughs> Stay. So this is a large size of uh, my treasure chest puzzle box uh -huh. and it doesn't open normally, obviously. Okay. There's a special trick that involves how you hold it and I'll leave that as a secret. I know how to open it. Go ahead. I actually have no idea how to open these boxes. Would you guys like to see us take a look at these and some of the other products that 3D Printy does? Because we normally get to see them before the general public and uh, they're really freaking cool. Like just straight up, they're really freaking cool. Honestly, I, nev I never feel worthy enough to show these off. Cause I'm like, I can't do it justice. So if you want to see some of Joe's work on a much cooler creator, go check out Zach Friedman's video where he talks about Joe's parts all the time. Well, a few he times, loves your absolutely. Stuff. This has been great. Zach well, only makes a few videos a year, so it's all the time. And you may not realize this, but you are secretly revealing a project before I do, depending on when this video comes out. Two weeks. These shelves, eh, about the same time as me. Okay. These shelves are all 3D printed. These are all snap together parts. Yes. And this is not a project that you should 3D print. No. 
it probably be better with CNC, but I got a 3D printer, so everything's 3D printed. <laughs> yeah, it is one of those things where you have a 3D printer, everything is 3D printed. Absolutely. And you brought just a smorgasbord of stuff here today, yep. and we can actually make our own fidgets here at the table, right? Absolutely, that's over here. All right, I'm excited for this. We gotta, we gotta do it, we gotta do it. Okay. Let's, let's walk around and make some fidgets. All right, so we got fidget cases okay. in fidget buttons. Okay. Just pick one fidget case and uh -huh. four fidget buttons. You just snap them right in, you got a free fidget. Some of these are, some of these got these TPU bumpers. We're gonna do this one. All right, we got some protopasta. Uh, there's some cookie cad mix in here with some inland. That's a crazy uh, a one. A lot of alien 3D samples. Nice. Um, so all sorts of stuff. Amber likes green. Is all it now, right. can it be pushed in from either direction? You, you, uh, easier to push it in through the round side. Okay. And it is a pretty tight, uh, hard push. Nice. Oh, may, maybe not. <laughs> Okay. okay, I'm gonna add a blue one, blue, 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 green, purple in here. Okay, dude. And there you are. It has such a nice little snap action sound. Oh, this is, this is, this is just so, I can see why people love these. Joe, <laughs> this is a problem. And we have a five tool head XL, so this is gonna be a real problem. <laughs> um, well, you can print those at different sizes, including. Oh no. This is not anywhere near the biggest size. Oh no. And if that's not good enough, no, this is pretty good. I don't know. This is pretty good. It's possible to have an ever-expanding chain of them that if you twist, you can get it into a Mobius strip. So you have eternal fidgeting. And this latch is TPU and PLA, so it just snaps right together. Okay, all right. Like so. Dude, that is so awesome. Guys, check out 3D Printing. We're gonna link to his stuff down below. This is a really cool project and he's got so many other things to show there. Anyone you want to give a shout out to? Any folks at home you want to say hi to? Just everyone. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Guys, seriously, check out 3D Printing. Links down below. On to the next one. We're here at West 3D. Look at it, some really freaking unique builds like this water cooled Voron that, that, that's got bubbles in it. <laughs> but we got the owner here. Kind of mad scientist looking. I, I, I kind of like it. And it's green. It's got to be green. You got to have the, 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 the alien ooze style green liquid cooling because why not? Yeah. You got to have some fun it, there. It fits. It fits. Black and green's our color. So I'm here for we'll it. Do it. Tell the folks some about West 3D. Yeah. So uh, West 3D is a fairly new uh, 3D printing company. Uh, we are a retailer in the Oregon area. Um, we are actually going to open the first 3D printing physical retail location that you can uh, you can go buy stuff in the Pacific Northwest. Nice. Um, we are a very heavy DIY uh, mod centric 3D printing shop. So if you've got a, a Voron, um, you've got an Ender or something like that that you're trying to mod, you need new hot ends, stuff like that. We've got all of that. And then we do focus on uh, high performance uh, accessories. So I was just telling you about some super high performance fans. Yeah. We just launched a vendor line, which has some really high performance fans. Rails, if you have a 3D printing related project, we just got those dart blasters. I don't know if you saw those. Yep. Um, things like that. So if you want to have fun with 3D printing, we're a shop that's, that's meant to support you doing that. Awesome. Yep. What's your favorite project here on the table? What are you guys showing off that that's your favorite? I, you already showed it. Oh, I really it love is, this. It, I really it, love this. Cool. So this is a T0 ex extended build height, um, CPAP cooling. It's insane. Um, Just everything to 11 because why not? Why not? Um, we've got a couple new things that are outside 3D printing. Uh, the Millennium Machines Milo CNC mill, yep, yep. mill right here is, is one of our new projects. Um, we have two brand new Salad Fork 1.1s, which is a, a new printer that was just released. It's a small trident it's, because it's a salad. It, it's, it's still a fork. He's a salad fork, the, yeah. The names are ridiculous. And, and it's a little bit them. bigger, small fork. Um, so the 1.1 expands the build volume. Oh, it's from, the dinner fork versus the salad fork. Dinner fork's bigger than the salad. That's what we should call it. You should. You should, yeah. you should call it the dinner fork. Yeah. Um, the other thing is for these DIY projects, we're I think the only vendor in the U.S. that offers what we call a configurator. So if you say, hey, I want to get a salad fork, I want to get a Voron 2.4, but I want it with a mag bed and I want it with, you know, a, you know, a special hot end and I want all of those things you can choose from us and you'll get a kit delivered to you that has all those things. Nice. Instead of getting sort of 
you know, a printer that, like a form bot that's gonna be everything, right? You actually yeah. get your printer, the printer that you want, you can actually source from us. Nice, so, yeah. I dig that. And I know there's one other thing that you do that isn't 3D printing. What do we do? Hot sauce. Oh yeah, we have hot sauce. West 3D hot sauce. <laughs> so I know that's a thing for you guys, your hot sauce. So, you know, we're a small company. I'm the owner, we've got, we've got four people at our shop, a couple people remote. We have fun. I mean, we're all makers and like, it's when you have your own company, why the hell not, right? Yeah, yeah, have fun. So, so and the Undertaker Tungsten Carbide Nozzle is actually one of our other like self-designed products that are pretty popular. And so it's got a tungsten carbide nozzle on it. It's, if you use 3D glasses, it's it's a 3D glasses. Oh, nice, thing. nice. So fun stuff. I mean, we just try to have fun with things. And that's also, I mean, this event is such like a cool thing because everybody around here has projects that, you know, they did because it was fun. Yeah, you know, Flycron, I mean, stuff like that. Where it's like, that thing was absolutely It's like, insane. why would you do that? Because it's fun. Yeah. And why not? Like, yeah, because you can, it. not because you should. Exactly. Yeah. It, they never said it prints well. Yeah, you know? no, no. <laughs> no, they didn't. have never actually said that. That's true. No. Yeah. But no, I, I know of West 3D. We've ordered from you guys in the past. Really? Yeah. That makes me, thank you. Yeah, hey. It is nice to know, of one, the, you know, face the name, of course, yeah. but also be able to have companies. I'm in Florida, so kind of local, within the United States, yeah. right? That we can buy from that have those vendor relationships that smaller companies aren't able to get yeah. where and you guys already know what you want you know your target market because oh yeah it's it's it, yeah. it's you you're, you're you're your own target market yeah. and, and if it, you call us we're going to be able to tell you about the printer and we like we've done yep. it we've we've ran into the same issues you've ran into yeah you sure about that i run into a lot of weird issues i don't know i don't know i have a lot <laughs> of weird issues but guys check out west 3d links will be down below you know where they are. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing all this stuff off. You guys, you guys always have a nice booth. The lighting is is nice. Everything looks good. Two years ago, we were in my garage. Like this is hey. just, this is like been a blessing that I can't describe. Everyone's got to start somewhere, right? And see, look, if you want to start your own 3D printing company, no matter where you want to go, right here, right? Let me know. I, I will help you also get one going. I mean, it's a it's a big Same. market, and we're not big enough to cover it. Amen I mean, to that. Yeah. Well, then you know what you should do? You should come on my podcast and we should talk about this. Yeah, we should talk about what it takes to grow and scale a business to something that is not just running out of your garage, something that can be done in yeah. a brick and mortar or in a warehouse space and how makers, no matter who they are, all have the opportunity totally. and ability yeah. to do it themselves. Totally, I would love to do that. I'm down for it. Awesome, man, pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank Guys, you. lots of more Rocky Mountain Rep Press coverage coming at you right after this. All right, thank you. The sweetest 3D printer out there, the Coco Press. We're here with Ellie, possibly the sweetest person I know. Now Camera Lady not. Amber. Okay, now Camera Lady Amber is gonna be mad at me. We got Ellie here from Coco Press, and we're talking chocolate. Chocolate? I always hated it. Anyways, chocolate. Chocolate 3D printing. So Coco Press, yeah. right? The amazing chocolate 3D printer that you can actually build yourself or not. You guys are starting to offer fully built ones, right? By the end of the year, we're hoping to have fully assembled ones. More for, you know, the professional shops that don't want to build their own, but want to make and print and sell chocolate. That's the value, right? These are basically built on the, the Voron V0, right? And they're not Ish. made. They were inspired by the Voron V0. I'm pretty sure there's only one single part left from the V0 in this whole thing. Ah, Voron of Theseus. Got it. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. You're teasing something here. And I asked about it. You're a bit of a tease, aren't you? A little bit. A little bit. We got a industrial style or more professional style cocoa press, right? Yeah, so we have a uh, professional package that has, you know, it is the same base machine, but it has beautiful stainless steel... Uh, Panels, easy to clean, looks like it fits into a commercial kitchen, and we're hoping to have that available later this year as a fully assembled printer. I was gonna say, is that gonna be fully assembled only? Definitely fully assembled only. Yeah, and that that's the big thing when you're looking at a business class machine, you don't assemble them. You do not assemble business class machines, those are not business class machines, those are projects. And projects cost money. You want your machine to come in and start making you money, and you all have been placing machines with users that are actively making money with these machines. Isn't that right? We have been, yeah. Let's talk about how the Cocoa Press works, because 
I don't see rolls of filament here that are made of chocolate at least. So how exactly do we get from this to this? Insert B-roll. Um, the cocoa cores start like this, uh, which are cylinders. They go into our stainless steel cartridge, and then that goes into the printer. That heats it to just below body temperature, pushes it with about 10 pounds of force, and it solidifies at room temperature. And then, my favorite part is that the chocolate only touches four parts, all that can be removed and cleaned, and that can be removed specifically with no tools. That is convenient. It's, um, I, I don't know if you've all ever handled chocolate heavily or dealt with heating chocolate heavily. It makes a mess. And being able to quickly clean it out without needing tools, so you're not like fumbling around between chocolate hands and tool hands, it, this is really convenient to make it so you're easily able to switch materials as you need it. Are you actually able to switch out chocolates mid-print? Theoretically. Theoretically. Um, at the moment, what you have to do is remove it, put new, uh, new cocoa core in, and wait the 20 minutes to preheat. Mm -hmm. I will say we are working on a product that we are hopefully calling Cocoa Buddy that will be an external preheater, and we'll just make that whole swap. Okay, so it's More basically easy. like the extruder mechanism and heater without the extruder mechanism. Yeah. And just yeah. a standalone unit. Yeah. And that way you could be able to swap between things relatively Definitely. quickly. Cocoa Press Tool Changer when? You heard it here first. My plan, and now it's on video, so this is going to be hard, is to build one for the SMF auction at Smurf this year and uh, auction off an, either an IDEX or a tool changer, realistically an IDEX printer. Um, I have not started working on this yet. It's April 21st of 2024. Anyway, so uh, that is my, uh, that's my hope, that's my goal. I am known for doing projects and then not finishing them. Although Cocoa Press I have, I followed through on that, you know, nine and a half years, but. Uh, well, hey, as long as you got to the finish line, it doesn't matter how long it took you to get there. Getting to that finish line is what matters. Ellie, I've always loved these printers. We are planning on building a Cocoa Press, hopefully sometime this year. What color would you guys want to see? And are we going to go traditional with the actual, like, proper Cocoa Press colors? Or do we want to have a little bit of fun? You guys let me know down in those comments below. But if you do want to check out what Cocoa Press does, we'll link to them down in the description as well. Check out what Ellie is doing over Cocoa Press and her entire team of awesome people making awesome stuff with freaking chocolate. Honestly, that's the, the, it's the sweetest 3D printer that we got here at Rocky Mountain Rep Prep Fest 2024. If you all want to check out the cool stuff going on at Cocoa Press, check them out. CocoaPress.com, of course, we'll link to it down below as well. Because, well, hey, maybe you can end up like the crazy people at the $5 tier and higher whose names are listed right next to me. Thank you all for making these trips possible. And a big thank you to Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Fest for helping us get here as well. Right below, myself and Ellie will be the entire playlist for the Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Fest 2024. And next to that will be the one from 2023. But that is all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. Of course, don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Say it. Keep making awesome. Have a good one. I watch all your videos, I promise. Yeah, totally. Chocolate! <laughs>no that that's great that's great i'm just trying to make content for you what yeah, can no, i this say is, this is this is great what can I not say? many people can make me just completely this that's it you're saying that that most people that that doesn't happen often no it doesn't oh that's no, actually no. funny that was a genuine it's not question. the first time in my life that doesn't happen often